I would like to um, introduce the next contributor, Milica Tomic, who I'm going to call now. She is in Belgrade at the moment. She is based before I'm going to introduce her in a very short blurb, just to make her present in this space. Milica? Ciao. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you are now on, on screen uh, of um, the Irish Museum of Modern Art, the Great Hall. Yes, hello. <laughs> and I just uh, turn, uh, it's very difficult. I don't know how to do this. Uh, no, no, you don't have to turn, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Milica Tomic in Belgrade, and we are here about, I would guess, 60, 70 people in the, in the room. And it's darkening now in Dublin, which is, I think, really good for the projection, so the image will become more crispy and more, with more contours and more contrast. And Milica Tomic uh, is, um, is a very good friend for many years, with whom I have been working a lot in various projects, and we also had a lot of discussions around exhibiting violence, politics of memory. And uh, it's, it's really dreadful that Milica, you cannot be here now with your presence in, uh, in form of your body, but it's great that we have at least some possibility of technology to hear you in form of an image and to hear your voice. And uh, I just would like to introduce you briefly so the audience here knows uh, a little bit more about you. So Milica Tomic works as an independent artist based in Belgrade exploring interrelations between art, society, and public space, by researching, unearthing, and bringing to public debate issues related to memory trauma and social amnesia. Her projects often explore a multitude of unorthodox ways in which art can be created, performed, transformed, and pondered. Tomic is founding member of a new Yugoslav art theory group called Grupa Spormenik Monument Group. In 2010, Tomic conceived and initiated an educational platform called Working Group Four Phases of Omarska. And uh, Milica also, um, it's, I think it's an, an important uh, point to mention that uh, like maybe like 10 years ago with the foundation of the Gruber Spomenik, uh, Milica Tomic changed her practice from an individual artist to collective practice and uh, artistic production. And um, she has been taking part in international exhibitions uh, throughout of the 90s and 2000s and 2010s, as for example the 24th Sao Paulo Biennale uh, in uh, like uh, 1901 and, no sorry, 2001-2003 at the Venice Biennale at the 8th International Istanbul Biennial, a research exhibition project called Populism at the National Museum of Art in Oslo, the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam, and the Frankfurter Kunstverein. The 15th Sydney Biennale, the Manufacturing Today, the Trondheim Biennale, and the 10th Georgia Biennale, as well as the Odessa Biennial in 2013. And I'm very happy um, that Milica is contributing today a project uh, around the music genre Turbo Fork. And as you can understand that the entire conference tries to introduce various practices and disciplines. It's a transdisciplinary series of contributions that shall allow us to open up a discussion on violence through various points of entry. So Paolo pointed out the inscription of violence in the landscape and architecture, and to understand the forest as architecture was really very strong, this also connection. And Milica is going to talk uh, about um, um, Turbo Fork. And I would like to hand over the 
sound to you, Milica, and you just please tell me what I shall do and where I can assist you in activating something from my computer to show. Thank you. Thank you, Doreen. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, and I'm really honored to be one of the speakers. And I'm not ironic. <laughs> not at all. Even the title of my paper is called Who is Singing Over There? Uh, even it sounds like a dramaturgy, like an ideal dramaturgy for this paper. We just actually recently realized that I need a visa. And I think actually it is not a big deal. Uh, as we know that the majority of the world would need a visa, even couldn't get it. So uh, let us just be aware about this and uh, let's start talk about this. So about... Uh, uh, so... I could say that this, let's say, perfect dramaturgy opens another set of layers and thoughts, and uh, many of them are real, uh, let's, let's say, related to this conference. And uh, I would uh, like to talk and discuss about this. But first of all, I would like to make a brief introduction. Uh, explaining the main topic of my talk, that is turbofog, that Doreen uh, just now mentioned. Um, and there are various aspects of this uh, music genre. So, turbofog is a popular music genre, which is a local collision of different and opposite influences emerged from different musical genres, Similar, uh, similar both to the North African Rai and to the 90s techno dance music. Uh, this specific genre emerged in Serbia at the beginning of the 90s, exactly during the war in former Yugoslavia in 92, and spread all around the region, especially during the war. So it was listened all around, uh, uh, let's say, uh, warring sides. Uh, Turbofolk is simply, we could say, another name for a brutal transition between socialism and capitalism that in former Yugoslavia was operated and performed uh, through the war. And it is also another name of a lack of political and economic regulation and the absence of uh, building codes and zoning laws. So turbo eventually became a prefix for social and media phenomena in the wartime and the post-war periods. As a result, uh, terms such as turbo politics or turbo television, turbo architecture or turbo urbanism came into currency. And this is just one of the phases of the 90s capitalism, a turbo capitalism that is linked directly to the turbo industry, or turbo diesel. Uh, industry. So it is emblematic to the 90s crisis. It is symptomatic for changes on the global scene. At the same time, specific local contribution to the globalization process. Uh, and why local? And what is local? What is exactly local here? Uh, what we have is a satellite television signal distributing popular techno dance on one side and Arabic folk music on the other. And both were hijacked by local composers and producers, which proceed almost in real time to rearrange and accommodate it for local markets. So due to the lack of economic regulation, Turbofolk accomplished this by appropriating the post-production cultural with no limits, which is a perfect, actually, uh, uh, let's say, example of, of, of capitalism. So I would like to ask you, Doreen, if you can just... Uh, um, uh, give us a link to the uh, to one of the singers, uh, and I have to say just to just to just to mention that most of the singers were female singers. But we will now listen to one of of uh, actually he was at the beginning maybe the first male singer that was uh, um, that was that was that was one of the uh, turbo folk protagonists. Oh! 
Kada sam joj rekao i ti, mislio sam na dan dva Sad će iz daleka vidi, gdje je ona, gdje sam ja Samo ja pesma vola, a da je pesma život moj I ove čaše oko sola, samo joj moj dajte njoj Samo ja pesma vola, a da je pesma život moj I ove čaše oko sola, drugi moj dajte njoj Ajmo! Ah, sorry. I mean, in one moment we can stop. We don't have to listen to the whole. I do think that it is, yeah. I put you back on screen. Thank you. Yeah. I hope, I hope you could get, I mean, let's say, feeling of this sound, but... Maybe it was too short, but uh, we don't have so much time. So at the same time, it was used as one of the very successful means of the war propaganda during the 90s. And it is closely linked to the war. Even so today, it represents a model uh, of, inter of integrative culture, which connects people divided by new national borders and new identity clusters in former Yugoslavia. So this music genre and powered by high developed post-production, by new technologies and new media tools, and generated the specific form of the turbo folk culture that mostly attract the younger generation that is grown and born during the war. So if it's possible that you just uh, take a link of Seka Aleksic, this is the second link, please. Can you, the audience, hear very well everything? Okay, cool. Seka Alexi? Yeah, Alexi Tje. Alexi Tje. Continue. The yeah, we can continue a bit more with uh, Seka. No, 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 no. With with me. Okay, <laughs> okay you are back. So, um, I will later. I can also translate her words because it's also very important to that what we were, we are going to talk later. But uh, let us go uh, uh, continue. Uh, and I have to say, on the other hand, 
we have we have so we have the younger the younger generation young generation that is grown and born during the war and that actually enjoys and uses Turbo Folk as a, some kind of a glue of an amalgam of all these new, uh, new, let's say, new states, new national borders and new identity clusters. So, so on the other hand, we have a strong objection of this genre among the local arts, academic, cultural elites in the former Yugoslavia that usually identifies Turbo Folk as a low, tasteless, post-industrial, post-cultural trend, and it performs uh, and, and it calls, uh, they call its performance and fans turbofolk population and perceive them as intoxicated other. So exactly these were the reasons the turbofolk at that time became main topic of my work and especially related to the performance from 2001 that I would like to, 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 to show you and to present to you. But it is also directly related to something that you, Doreen, mentioned in your introduction, uh, uh, introducing exhibiting as also a practice of displacement and referring to Derrida, that violence has to be named, to give a name to learn a language and of the world of art, politics, medicine, economics, trade, court, military, etc., that simply request to subscribe to the laws of its particular language without any compromise. So I would really like to refer to this, but instead of displacement, I would rather uh, talk and think about exhibiting and art practice as dislocation. But as dislocation, um, as Ernesto Laclau would say, dislocation equals emancipation. And uh, I would like to talk actually about this, related to this performance of Turbo Folk. And this first performance that I have done actually was part of one exhibition that was titled Dubis Die Welt, that means you are the world. And that was a central exhibition within the Vienna Summer Festival in 2001. And this was the moment actually after the war and after the changes when the regime of Serbia was strongly changed and uh, when Turbo Folk was actually uh, forbidden in all, in all TV channels, all public, uh, let's say, uh, uh, space, the whole public fear was actually empty of Turbo Folk, but it was listened everywhere in the underground. People were listening at home still. Uh, and I have also to say that all other, let's say, institutes as, uh, for example, theater or university or Academy of Science and Art uh, became, uh, was still, uh, let's say, in power even they took really part in the war and in the production of the uh, politics of war. But Turbo Folk was finally the only one which was accused uh, to be part and to be uh, a main representative and productor of, 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 of war. Uh, so uh, uh, the theme of this exhibition, that I was, uh, You Are the World, uh, was displayed uh, actually was a display, uh, was, well, let's say, imagined as a display of different realities, local, specific, and authentic products that are aftermath of globalization. This was the idea of the exhibition. And it was about all these, let's say, aftermath of globalization that are always consumed only locally and never see the light of the global culture. In that sense, the meaning of the exhibition title, written in small letters, You Are the World, was a critic to a request quote from every, everywhere at that time, connecting the global consumer industries and the debate about human rights, which actually meant you are the world, but you cannot participate. So this is my position also in this moment. I have to reflect on this because it's really so obvious. Uh, so for this particular exhibition that, sh that should discuss local specific and authentic products that are aftermath of globalization, 
I decided to produce a work about turbofog. And that was the most problematic, but also most exciting result and influence of the global trend. So the performance was an invitation to one of the greatest local superstar singer at that time, uh, and her name is Dragana Mirkovic, to appear at the exhibition and to sing within my performance as she would usually do at some concert hall. So the idea was to stage this performance in the central exhibition space and to organize it as an installation as a part of, of, of the exhibition. So when planning it, I thought of it as a dislocation of Turbo Folk concert of the star singer within the space of contemporary art exhibition, and I considered this as a version of a ready-made artistic practice. So in this case, this was a, like a ready-made object that was industrial pop culture product, product of, of, of pop culture. So however, uh, during the work and preparation, my relationship with the singer, with music producers and all other actors of the Turbo Folk scene, uh, on the one hand, and the exhibition curators and organizers of the other, already at the very beginning of our collaboration, started to dislocate a question, the normal and established position of all of us. So the singer's decision, to, already a singer's decision to take part in such an, let's say, micro-community, that is contemporary art community, under the conditions that are defined by the exhibiting system of contemporary art, put into question system itself, the exhibiting codes, but of course also her own usual way of working. Um, I, I just want to ask you, can you hear me? Am I too fast? Just give me some response. I would like to, to, uh, to have some communication about this. Can you hear the responses? No, no, but uh, if I can go further, I would like in this tempo. If it's too fast, please tell me because of Skype. Might be a problem. Is this good? Yes. 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 OK. So, uh, a first problem that was for me, you have to imagine that this is 2001. Um, this is the beginning of 2000, actually. Uh, I had to formulate and create a title for her participation. And for that time, in 2000, it was something not just new for me, but for the whole art system in general. It was that what was later called, maybe for Claire Bishop, like delegated performance. Uh, but I don't consider this work still not as a delegated performance, and I will explain why not. And the result was, and I would like, you, Doreen, if you could just show the poster. Uh, the image? Yes, the image. So it is written, performance, Milica Tomic, performed by Dragana Mirkovic. So I have also to say that I never have seen Dragana, the singer, as being a simple material or a media that I use to create a work. For me, she was really someone who also takes responsibility, not only in relation to her reputation of the superstar at the very local scene, but literally took my place, the place of the artist, within contemporary art system. And for that reason, Dragana played an important role during the preparation and had, due her popularity and the role that she played in the society, the key task of involving a large group of ethnic minority population of more than 300,000 ex-Yugoslav citizens who live and work in Vienna, that are immigrant workers. So this large group of minority population was completely invisible for the general Austrian public. They were excluded from the Austrian society by living parallel lives, isolated within their own community, with their own social clubs, newspapers, TV and radio station. 
So the appearance of Dragana Mirković as a part of contemporary art show in the so-called high art institution was a real breakthrough that worked both ways. For the first time, the large minority population was invited and also interpolated in a, in a, uh, uh, to become visible within the Austrian public sphere. And for the first time, contemporary art made the breach into the, their excluded social minority immigrant worker community. So when I discussed the announcement of the performance and the distribution of the poster that you can see with organizers and curators, uh, organizers were very proud to say that they will put 500 copies in the city of Vienna and the aim was to invite and make visible, bring into being her audience that are ex-Yugoslav immigrant workers in Vienna. It, I was very excited to relay this news to Dragana, but she replied in the spirit of turbo capital logics. She said, Milica, listen, 500 copies. This is ridiculous. I will print 5,000 and we will put them all over Vienna. That's the only way we can work to get people here. So in this moment, I immediately contacted organizers and curators. And in order to, uh, let's say, I, I was extremely excited about the fact that there will be 5,000, let's say, uh, posters all over the city, but the curators and organizer were seriously convinced that 5,000 posters are equal 5,000 visitors, and even they were even more afraid that exhibition space will be invaded by 5,000 people who are not art consumers, but Yugoslav immigrant workers or 5,000 potential Serb nationalists and that the security of the whole exhibition will be compromised, and then these people will perhaps attack the works of other artists, because there were artists as uh, Ari Sala, who is actually an Albanian artist, or um, Atlas group that are coming from Beirut, and that so-called Balkan ethnic wars will, will be continued by other means at the exhibition. So with this was actually the... They demanded that we reduce the number of posters and to print just 500, but Dragan and I still printed 5,000 of the even, of, of this, uh, of them, of the posters. So even though to the exhibition, the concept of exhibition was, uh, and I will now quote the, 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 the curators and wrote the, the concept of the exhibition, a desire for a real which does not seek affirmation of the world as it is, but the creation of a new country histories. And even though the concept of the intent of the exhibition were reflected in the special design that was created by La Carton et Vazal architects and whose exhibition architecture had the message, let us open all the doors, let the world inside. And all the works actually share the single continuous undivided space. All this changed when it came to our performance and 5,000 immigrant workers who were expected Organizers and curators closed all the doors, blocked the exhibition, placed the security, brought the chairs in in order to discipline uh, the immigrant workers and charge for tickets. Doreen, if you can please uh, show the video. Okay. It would be beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Thank 
Thank you a lot. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming tonight. And this is contemporary art. In Turin, can you hear any sound? <laughs> I can't follow where you are now, so please, uh, uh, when you when you see that this is uh, just done. Oh yes, it's now uh, over. It's we finished with um, the three minutes, and we also have like um, maybe f five more minutes. Mm -hmm. for, um, yeah. Okay. I put you on screen again, Melissa. Thank you. So. I uh, we could say that the man, uh, there is some echo that's really unpleasant, so... Okay. So, so maybe it's because of the microphone. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Is it better? Yeah, I, yeah, I hope. So the main task, we can say, our main idea and the concept of... Uh, um, uh, we could say that... Um, of art is to subvert uh, and question the established norms, the, the consensus of public opinion and governing politics. So today, enabling artistic practice and production by opening up and estab establishing a free space where art can happen and take place is today an indicator of so-called democratic society. So we could say as much their democracy, just as much there is a free space of art. So, but it all happens always under certain conditions. Art has to be isolated, situated in a secured area and under strictly controlled conditions. Everything has to happen in the frame called art. But the fact uh, what happens within this frame can be revolutionary, subversive, critical, radical, but it has no influence, no impact, and should not endanger the society or governing politics. So the art does not produce effects in reality and has no impact at all. So how a direct impact. So however, the consequence is that so-called democratic world, no one takes 
are seriously, to so we could say that the totalitarian societies and the countries with dictatorship as well, then unenlightened ones still take are seriously in these societies, exhibitions are still closed, banned, artworks are destroyed, artists imprisoned, and people react to them immediately. So because they do not know, understand, nor respect the contemporary art codex, they do not recognize the frame called art. Only within these societies is art today recognized as a dangerous for society, government, or state. That is why it is radically censored. In democratic societies, the type of censorship is un this type of censorship is unnecessary. Can you hear me? Yes. Is it? Uh, uh -huh. Milica? Uh, can, I, I, that is practically sense. So in democratic system, this type of censorship is unnecessary as it takes another form. In democratic society, the censorship is established by seeing act, by declaring something as a work of art. In this way, this intention becomes completely harmless and irrelevant to the society. What happened at the Dubis Develt exhibition? When we discussed printing and distributing the, po the posters, the exhibit institutions, organizers, and curators decided to following the frame, rules and codices, print 500 posters. And this, according to their estimates, meant that in the worst case scenario, 200 immigrant workers, potential Serb nationalists, non-consumers and non-connoisseur of art at the most could come to the performance people who do not understand the frame of codices of contemporary art. Even though they would be among us, they could be only a small number of them and the curators and organizers could have control over the situation. However, Dragana Mirković in my performance is not just someone appearing as a ready-made object, but I, she neither was someone who does executes performance, but she was someone who introduces her own rules and ways of production by introducing 5,000 printed posters all over the city, building a kind of a bypass to reality and society, which is influenced by Turbo folk. And Dragana's very appearance in my works and our relationship with this work produced a dislocation of a local genre to the international scene, dislocation of so-called non-culture, excluded part of the culture into the high culture. But what is important that our relationship at the same time created a new audience. So this turn, it is not about, let's say, uh, it is about a production of audience, actually. So this turned out to be a crucial aspect of this work. And it was own way of production and codices that makes a frame of contemporary art permeable. That is why suddenly there was a security, charging of tickets, chairs, etc., and we were supposed to repair the damaged frame. So the power of this location that happened through Dragana appearing with the space of my performance realized the inc 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 incursion of something heterogeneous, non-artistic into the field and created actually um, uh, an object. Uh, so in order to open up discussion and I would like to ask just for five minutes more because I think it's it's just just to open some questions for the discussions late for discussion later. Um, let us go back to the Turpo folk phenomena and point point to its objection 
as a domain of a so-called high culture from throughout former Yugoslavia, which I would like to ask, can we think about turbo folk as a space that provides an insight into the contemporary politics behind the phrase of, let's say, inclusiveness and discuss its emancipatory potential. Why do I say so? So dislocating to the turbo folk from one field to another and from a local community to the international context, there we can recognize a whole conglomerate of ideologies and politics behind the turbo folk, also as a turbo folk as a music genre, as well as the issue of cultural racism against migrant workers and all who didn't gain during the transition period, the transition from socialism to capitalism. So at the same time, the objection of this genre among local art, academic and cultural elite in former Yugoslavia usually ends in cultural racism and identifies turbo folk as a low, tasteless, etc. So cultural production, narrative of turbo folk, presents the territory of identity construction at the same time and identity formation in which turbo folk is a mixture of cultures that are former colonial masters. On one side, the Ottoman Empire and the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Habsburgs as a Western part that starts exactly in the war of the 90s and the, in the, the war of the 90s. At this point, we can also refer or Edward Said, who says that all the discourses about others and other cultures are always ideological and that the orientalization and colonization discourse and process never happens somewhere else, but it is present every time center crosses the periphery. So turbo folk is actually the only contribution to uh, uh, from the space of former Yugoslavia to the only contribution to globalization. And I will just quote Rasko Mochnik, who says that I think it now through the concept of periphery cultural industries who must activate social potentials of that space in order to survive the crash with central global cultural industries. The major gap and the disparity between media representation, that is a turbo folk star, and the reality, the uncanny of the real life. But at the same time, they support and nurture each other, thus representing two sides of the coin. The war on the one side, the ethnic cleansing, genocide, was never present in Serbia in the public sphere or in any way represented in the media. But therefore, the construction of the new female body, which was represented through the turbo folk female stars, was just projection of the war that was invisible. The construction of the female body was actually a screen in the public sphere that protected the Serbian nation from the reality, from the fact that this country was uh, running the war. So the question of the body engagement in nationalist processes and roots of capital can open a wider story about the process of transition in Serbia and the relationship between Serbian nationalism and the world. So the body of the female folk singer, e a quoted through public, academic and common discourses, with the whole turbo folk genre, and we are, uh, and with the whole Serbian popular culture, we are that we via that we wide masses of people can function as the point in which the problems of ethnicity, class, and sexuality intersect. The questions gains the importance when we look at the context of transition, which is mercilessly cancelled the benefits of the socialist era. So I argue that uh, I actually, yes, I, I think we, 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 could, we could stop here because it can go also further, but... Uh, um, Maybe, yes, we can uh, come uh, back we to... Can, we can discuss further. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my time is out at the moment. <laughs> 
For the moment, yes, thank you very much, Milica, for your presentation via Skype, and it arrived, I think. It arrived via the image and the sound. Thank you.